Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. It's the morning, I've just showered. I'm gonna do my skincare routine, have a little chat today. Today I wanna to talk about popular brands that I'm probably never gonna buy slash review on this channel. This isn't a video to like shit all over these brands and be like, oh, I fucking hate them. You can probably imagine that every day I get asked to review certain brands. If I ever review them, my opinions on them. And these are just easier ways to let you know that I'm probably not gonna review that brand you've been asking about. Maybe shit on them a a little bit, but not too much. Of course, this is my personal opinion. If you love these brands, keep using them and maybe even try and convert me in the comments. Again, these are brands I've definitely tried before on this channel, but I've never really purchased them. And I may have already reviewed one or two of these brands on my channel, but I probably never bought them. And going forward, I will not be buying them. I may be gifted them, which is different. But previously when I've been gifted these brands, it's just gone to friends and family or gone in the big giveaway pile. So I've already cleansed. I'm going to use a toner. This is the Then I Met You Living Sea Clean Cleansing Tonic. Deep sea water, licorice extract, papaya extract, and a hyaluronic acid. Oh, it's basically a micellar water to help prep, cleanse, and hydrate. I used this once. The day I got it, I kind of opened it and then just gave myself a wipe. and didn't really carry on using it from them, but I'm out of toner now, so I'm onto this one. Okay, let's talk about Charlotte Tilbury. I know if you watch me and my brother, I know we joke about this brand a lot, but I'll be blunt and just say that I don't think these products are truly worth the money or the hype that they get in my personal experience and opinion. I think my brother mentioned actually in a video that um, a lot of the reviews I see of this brand are from only influencers or people who were gifted the items. I've not come across somebody that there, of course, is somebody online who has done this, but I've not personally come across anybody who went out and bought the products thinking I've been influenced into buying these, you know? They do gift their products to all different sizes of influencers uh, with different audience sizes, I mean. And I love that. I wish more brands would do that. I will say that's one thing that Charlotte Tilbury are great at, I think is noticing people's engagement and reach and things like that, rather than just a, a figure on their follow account. But I honestly do think that's where a lot of the attention comes from. I, I, I just always see this was gifted. This was gifted. Charlotte Tilbury sent me this. I never really see people truly being like, I had to run out and buy this, you know? And I will say this brand <laughs> always reminds me of a Christmas panto for my American audience. A pantomime is like a musical comedy that's often kind of done at Christmas time. It's very camp. It's very over the top. It's usually done at Christmas. It always consists of some type of drag as well. Um, it's always like Jack and the Beanstalk, Cinderella, you know, all those kind of fairy tales. Great fun if you're a child, but the adverts always remind me of that. It's all very showmanship, show, show womanship. <laughs> Take this product, for example. I'm looking at the website here. Charlotte's Magic Serum Crystal Elixir. Beautiful name. Love it. Sounds right out Sailor Moon. There are a few words that I hate in skincare, however. Instant, miracle, and magic are some of those words that come to mind because skincare is none of the above and I don't believe should be sold as any of the of the above. I'm verging on a li hating elixir because it makes it sound better than it is. Like every product, if you think about, is an elixir, right? Then we have the description, which I'll screenshot and show you here because you have to see it. I have collaborated with expert scientists to bring you groundbreaking serum for hydrated, youthful looking skin. A magic matrix of ingredients expertly blended in a high performance elixir to give your skin a magic boost. It's all these fancy words, it's all very showy, very pantomime very camp. <laughs> it's, it's very old fashioned. It, you know, I think they do, they do their, um, what's the word? Their um, graphics, their um, copy, their advertising is on point. You can definitely tell Charlotte Tilbury has an image and a look and they do it great. And they do have their audience, which is great. And I feel like they target that audience effortlessly and brilliantly. And it does kind of remind me of very old fashioned adverts where they said things like magic elixir and you know, it's a potion and you know, for um, magic results. It's all very kind of old fashioned to me. This particular serum has crushed diamonds and stones in, which I guess if you're into crystal healing, it could be your thing. But when I previously talked about this product, people who were into crystal healing and believe in the power of crystals were like, you can't just crush up crystals and put it in a product and say that it's gonna give you healing benefits. That's not how it works. To me, this product is a little bit like 
um, covering a tub of Vaseline with diamonds, which I would love, but you know, it's a little bit like, I was gonna say rolling shit and glitter, but the product's not shit, it's decent, but it's just kind of like a, a bit like, what's the word? I think it's tarting up a very basic serum, this particular product, in my opinion. And I feel like that's what Charlotte Tilbury are very good at. Claims, big extravagant words and showmanship and adverts and great PR, their PR team is great, but for a lot of pretty average skincare products. And I think when people do eventually try it, they are a little bit like, oh yeah, kind of average, expensive. But again, I'm not angry that they're average and expensive because there is a, a demographic for people who don't mind spending a little bit more money on products with a, a name, do mean, and an image. Next, I'm gonna go in with my Cosrx Sika Serum um, just to help heal my slightly irritated skin. It's getting better. I don't know if you can tell, but my skin's been a lot less red recently and I think it's just because I'm concentrating on healing more than anything and less actives. Let's talk about Skin SkinCeuticals. This is one of those brands that I honestly hear nothing but really good stuff about, really good stuff about and this is for everyone from your um, skin influencers to um, estheticians, dermatologists, celebrities, new influencers who haven't been gifted um, these products. Nothing but good things. And they have some iconic products that everybody loves. They are so expensive. They are so expensive. Every time I think, oh, I should give SkinCeuticals a chance. I go on the website and I'm like, oh, <laughs> maybe next month, maybe. And I'll be 100% transparent. At this moment in time, I can afford their products. Like I'll be fine if I buy a serum one month, you know? But I also had a life before being an influencer um, where I wouldn't dare, wouldn't dare spend anything more than even 20 pounds on a skincare product. You know, I was a student, I had to budget, I was living in London, I had to budget. I think that sticks with you for like your whole life. And I just can't, I cannot allow myself to spend a hundred pounds or more on a serum. Saying that I have what's like very expensive recently, like I, I, like the most expensive thing I think I've bought for cosmetics ever, which I'll share with you towards the end of the month, but that's gonna last me way longer than a serum, you know? That being said, part of me truly believes that their products their formulations are what makes the products the price that they are. Now, this isn't the case with all products. I feel like a lot of the um, price points for other brands comes down to the name, the brand name, the packaging, the endorsements. So I'm not saying they're overpriced because I, I believe they are worth what they've priced their products at, but they're expensive. 80 pounds for a serum isn't exactly an average price, price point for the majority of people, right? And I believe it goes up up to 100, 165, I think one of the serums is. Actually in an article with Birdie that I'm looking at here, which was medically reviewed, they mentioned that science is at the core of the brand and when asked why SkinCeuticals was so expensive, they actually say SkinCeuticals are so, am I saying that right? SkinCeuticals are so expensive. I, I feel like I'm, I'm saying like tissue instead of tissue. SkinCeuticals, no that's right, SkinCeuticals are so expensive because of the potency levels of high quality ingredients used. The brand also focuses intently on research and development, testing and formulation, which is a costly process. All of this helps ensure their products are highly effective. And I kind of believe this. I kind of believe this. And I don't often believe this with all brands. And they have a good handful of products, but they don't push out a shit ton of products all the time, useless looking products. Their products seem quite well thought through. But again, 165 on serum, I can't. I can't and I don't think I ever will. If I get gifted it, I will use it, I will review it. Um, this isn't a hint because if you gift it to me and you don't gift me every month, I will cry because I will probably love the serum, whatever, run out of it and never buy it. Like, I feel like I don't even want to be tempted, you know? <laughs> okay, next I'm gonna try this La Roche-Posay um, Hyla B5 Anti-Wrinkle Concentrate Repairing Replumping Eye Cream? or oh, eye serum. I actually, oh! <gasps> It's on like a rolly thing, okay. I often see people ask like, I have no idea how to use this, why this differs from dropping a pipette on your skin. And whilst honestly, I think nowadays brands kind of like do consider the fact that most people are gonna touch the pipette on their skin. Um, the difference with this would be that the brand want you to put the roller on your skin. So they're gonna make sure there's a good enough preservative system in there to deal with that constant skin contact. Oh, Sunday Riley. 
I think like I've talked about them before, but it was years ago. And honestly, Sunday Riley is kind of on the same page for me. Whilst not as expensive as skin SkinCeuticals, I feel like their products actually range from um, moderately priced, like a little bit above average, to just a bit more than I usually like to spend on skincare. That's incredibly sticky. That is so sticky. That might go well with my dew eye patches actually, but oh my God, look. It's like sticking my eyelids together. What the hell? Oh, okay. I can't get rid of... <laughs> Weird. Not, sh not massively keen on that. I have used some of their products before, mainly because I got it in PR. I've never bought it myself. I have actually always got it in PR. Never from... No, I got a few bits from Sunday, right? They sent me a really nice, like, Zodiac thing. But I usually get it because they're always in the end of year advent calendars, you know, the Christmas advent calendars that people like cult beauty do, they're always in those calendars. And I do understand why Good Jeans is a cult favorite, I get it. But there's a few reasons that I'm, I've just kind of put off their brand and the brand gives me the ick, as kids would say, ick is an icky word for me. Like that's what gives me the ick. If you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, they always have some really dodgy adverts on that show. I think the recent season I just watched, they were doing like an interior design challenge and good jeans just appeared on the side for no reason. And one of the queens was like, oh look, Sunday Riley, good jeans. I love that product. And that was it. And then in one show they were doing like um, a design challenge, you know, where they open all the boxes and they got materials and good jeans was in there as product placement. And it's so weird. It's so odd. Like American product placement is very different to what you're allowed to do here in the UK. Whenever I see it. So whenever I see Sunday Riley good jeans in my head, I'm always just like, oh my God, Sunday Riley good jeans. I love that. Like it's, you know, it's never like, it's really, it's really weird. I have this weird kind of like not nice connection with it. Oh, that ice ceramide moisturizer. I loved, I love that during winter. It's very, very nice. They also had that fake review contract controversy, which everyone seems to have forgotten about, which is absolutely fine. But reading what the FTC had to say about it, um, the FT FTC confirmed the Sunday Riley whistleblower's claim and found that the scheme to generate fake reviews of Sunday Riley products involved Miss Riley herself. The FTC commissioners Rohit Co Chopra, Copra? Chopra and Rebecca Kelly Slaughter said in a letter, rather than relying on satisfied customers to generate real buzz about her products, she directed her employees to write glowing reviews and bury negative ones while offering detailed instructions on how to avoid detection. Very sneaky. And I'll be honest, I'm like, okay, it's such a weird thing to do. And I will say though, it doesn't feel like this would be just like an isolated incident that Sunday Riley just did. I feel like this is something that other brands must do too. Not that that's okay. I'm just saying I'm glad that some light has been shed on what brands are potentially doing behind the scenes. I'm not bothered by it, to be honest. I must say it's one of those things that I can like forgive and forget. It is really sneaky and really, really a really stupid thing to do. But what kind of like confuses me more is that they didn't need to do it. People love Sunday Riley around this time as well. People love Sunday Riley. They had a cult following even to this day. They didn't need to do that. All they had to do was reach out to clients, customers by e via email and be like, leave us a review, not negative or positive. Leave us a review, get a discount. People do that all the time. They could have, you know, got loads of reviews in. They do that thing now, don't they? Where um, brands send products to influencers in exchange for a review. And whilst they don't say it's, it has to be positive, um, and can't be negative. The reviews are often overwhelmingly positive. And that's why when you see new products online, they already have like a hundred reviews, but the review should say review in exchange for product or something it says on the reviews. A little sneaky. And honestly, I'm okay with it to a certain, like I'm just not bothered by it. It's not something that's gonna make me like completely cancel the brand for me. There's certain things I can forgive and forget and I honestly don't care, but I just don't see myself committing to this brand ever, really. This is a new product. I was recently gifted this. This is the Soothing Centella Gel Moisturi Moisturizer from Dermatica. Um, Centella Asiatica, Ceramide Blend and Niacinamide, which looks really interesting. I like this packaging with all the information on the inside. This is more like an AM moisturizer, I guess. It's lightweight. Um, I've tried on and off their Dermatica products and didn't love their kind of like personalized products, but I'm interested to see what they have, what they have to offer. Am I meant to spin this? Packaging's a bit shit, I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't know whether I did that wrong. Apply it. Am I meant to twist it or something? I don't know. Let's see what this is like. Coodily. 
I feel like most people already know my views on this one. I feel like this one I've mentioned time and time again, but their clay mask, oh my God, it killed the brand for me. Absolutely killed the brand. I don't remember if I ever actually knew of the brand before their viral clay mask moment. I must have done, maybe. But I feel like when their vinaigrette instant detox mask went viral, I got so bored of it so quick, so quick. And it was mainly because of like the utter nonsense people were spewing about the what the clay mask can do and the benefits of the clay mask. The clay mask was just a clay mask. I tried it for myself. Really, really nice formulation. It was like a light, fluffy texture that dried down like a normal clay mask, but without the over drying and the kind of like, um, tightness on the skin that most clay masks leave you with. It's a, a nice clay mask. By the way, this moisturizer is very, very nice. It feels very light, but I feel hydrated. And I feel like I look dewy without being greasy. As far as like the claims, we'll have to give it like a while and see um, how it soothes. But what this fake hype was, was this mask was drying and like revealing like areas of enlarged pores, which every single clay mask does. Every single clay mask does. But everyone kept going like, look, it. this is where it's pulling gunk out of your pores. It's it's clearing out your pores, blah, 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 blah. When it wasn't, it's just where the mask is settling on areas where you probably do have a little bit of excess oil on top of your skin, where you have enlarged pores. Now these were beauty gurus and, you know, just people who were trying the product on TikTok, fine. But it was also dermatologists and estheticians who were promoting the mask, like, you know, the hashtag Kudali partner rather than, why can't influencers just put ad? Just put ad or sponsor. Why something's like partner? That doesn't make sense. Are you affiliated? Are you being sponsored? Is there exchange of money? Like what's going on? Be clearer. I don't understand why people got, can't just put ad. It's so easy to do. It's two letters. Just but these experts were saying the same shit. They were saying the same shit that I actually had to go, me, a humble skin influencer, had to correct an aesthetician who, because I was getting tagged in their advert all the time, and I had to kind of correct them and say like, you're using misleading language, which as an expert, an actual skincare expert is so important when you're online to not use misleading language in order to sell a product. Like people go to experts for real information. And what's even more annoying about this is I presume the brand had to sign off on these adverts. They had to approve these. They had to approve the use of not disclosing the ad properly. They had to approve the use of um, wrong terminology, but also they had to approve product claims that the product didn't even claim. Like nowhere on their website does the mask claim to be sucking gunk out of your pores, like everyone was saying. And this really put a sour taste in my mouth for this brand. I guess you can say our philosophies don't align. I tried one of their face mist. I think it was the beauty elixir because it sounded great. The packaging looked very, very nice. Again, I saw everyone on TikTok using it. I got it from Cult Beauty and oh my God, it was minty minty. It was like spraying mouthwash on my face. You know, back in the days when they put a shit ton of like peppermint and menthol into products and say it, like for teenagers and say it was invigorating. That's what this face mist was. It burnt, but it didn't actually hurt my skin. It was like someone was th like slightly just threatening me with mace, but wasn't quite putting on my skin. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was just minty, constant minty. The smell hung around for a whole day. It was unbearable. I went out so I couldn't wash my face. It was too much. It was too much. So yeah, I'm not really into their products. Um, clay mask is a nice one. Go for it if you still use clay masks. But yes, I do think brands have a responsibility to correct terminology um, when approving adverts and also making sure that their influencers are disclosing ads properly. Very quickly, let's talk about Elemis because I don't have a whole lot to say on this brand, but I do understand why people like them. I really like one of their cleansing balms, but other than that, I'm like, okay, like their products are nice. They're nice. Am I racing out to rebuy them? No, not really. But I get why I'm asked pretty much on a daily basis to review them. This is gonna sound weird, but I think it's one of those brands that I knew growing up. Like I knew, not like personally, but you know, I see them every we're growing up. So I'm kind of over it kind of thing. Like I'm not in a rush to buy them because I feel like they've been around me for so long. And I feel like for me personally, there's other brands that I want to review before Elemis. So they're always, every brand is going to come before them <laughs> because they're always just like not in my, 
in my roster to review, you know? So I got gifted some fragrances I want to try and I'm really trying to make fragrance part of my skincare routines because it really does affect the way I feel throughout the day. Um, and this brand, EXO, gifted me some products and they kind of make cheaper alternatives to luxury products, basically saying we can use the same high quality ingredients um, to create a luxury perfume, but for a fraction of the price. Um, they sent me Mummy's Money, uh, Poolside Politico, Backy Brulee, um, Box Fresh Barbie, and Pheromone Physics. And I'm going to try Pheromone Physics because it's um, a cheaper version of Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, which is actually one of my favourite fragrances. I just really like their branding. Yeah, I like this. Oh, that, that would look nice back there, actually. So I know what this product is supposed to smell like, so I will let you know if it's a good dupe or not. Already smells like one. Very very, very similar. If I didn't wear Not A Perfume as often as I do, I don't think I would notice the difference. It smells very good. If you like eccentric molecules, this is gonna, you're gonna like this a lot. Mm. It's nice because it smells like it, but it also has its own little twist, something to differentiate it a little bit and make me actually kind of wear it, not instead of it, of um, the dupe, but as another option that stands up there with eccentric molecules and Juliet has a gun. I like that a lot. Mm, mm, mm. Very good. Thank you, EXO. I like that one a lot. Okay, last one. Augustina Bader. Bader, Bader, Bader. I hate that I'm saying this. I really, really hate that I'm saying this, but I absolutely love these products. I love them so much. They are so nice. My skin for the, I think I use them for about a month around Christmas. I had finished review, like trying all the products that I was going to do sponsorships with throughout that Christmas period. Because brands love to sponsor you at Christmas and not throughout the rest of the year. And I, I just had this Augustina Badder. After being gifted them, I was gifted them from Space NK. And oh, I use them for a month and my skin looks so good. My skin looks so good. <laughs> until I had to start using other products that fucked on my skin, basically. The rich cream not only made my face look so well taken care of in an instant, but it looked nourished and plump and also helped my skin through a very dry winter. And the serum was... Right, okay, I'm not going to review them. That's not what this is about. I'm not reviewing them. But let me explain what this brand is actually all about, um, because I had no idea. I had no idea what the fuss was or why they are so expensive. So they say globally recognised... This is from the Cult Beauty website, actually. Globally recognised as a world-leading expert in stem cell research, Professor Augustinus Bader has spent his career developing formulas that unlock the body's capacity to heal itself. His potent skincare and hair care potions are packed by three decades of research and have won some of the industry's most disc discerning and covetable awards. They talk a lot about this TFC8, which is copyrighted, um, which apparently nourishes and protects the skin by supporting the skin's innate potential for renewal. Honestly, I looked on the website to try and understand what this was and I, I still have no idea what this is. I don't get it. I don't get it. It could be very real and exciting new research and science, or it could be marketing bullshit. Either way, my skin loves this brand. But I believe their cheapest product is a £32 lip balm, which I would say is probably the only product from their range I tried that I didn't think was worthy of the price tag. I've tried £5 lip balms, which are just as nice as this one. But their most expensive being the serum at 200 90 pounds. They do a few smaller sizes of their products all around the 70 pound mark price point, like a little bit above and below if you if you are really desperate to try these. But come on, I, I can't be reviewing skincare. Like that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And again, I'm not saying that skincare shouldn't be that expensive. I think there's definitely a market for luxury, obviously, otherwise the luxury market wouldn't exist. Some people are rich and want expensive stuff and that's absolutely fine. If this science is everything it's cracked up to be, then sometimes the cost might be what you have to pay for this new exciting research. I don't know. I get it. I'm not angry about it. To some, those prices will be like what inculus prices are to us, you know, like just whatever. If you have the money to spend on skincare like that, I am happy for you. And I think you would love, absolutely love this brand. If you don't, don't worry, you're not missing out. And knowing how the skincare world and cosmetics world works in general, 
somebody's probably going to dupe this or they're going to kind of like package up this technology and sell it on to other brands and they'll work out a way to make this kind of um, science and technology a lot cheaper. Is it called technology? I think so. So I'm going to go and do my hair now. So let me know what you think about some of these brands, some of these products. If you love or hate any of them, if you agree with me or really disagree with me, again, try and convince me to think otherwise in the comments below. Check out some more product reviews here, some general light entertainment here, and I'll see you over there. Bye.